Inspire Keys, and yes, you should be able to see my keys view on Google Hangouts or on YouTube Live at the moment. Um, just gonna test it. Yep, it's working well, cool. I'm also gonna go ahead and record my screen so that way you're able to see my um, good quality recording of this live q a and with this thanks so much everybody i know i'm running four minutes late i really really appreciate that you um show me your patience today so guys oh esther is here with us hello esther okay so i'm gonna go ahead and um just explain to everybody um first up hello it's sandra from inspired keys i'm doing another live worship keys uh, q a q a i guess you can call it live q a um, and basically, I jump on this twice a month to answer um, Worship Keys questions from Inspired Keys Academy members. And um, the value of this is I demonstrate how I might play something um, in response to uh, members who share the way they play. So um, it's a really wonderful way to learn. Um, but more importantly, it's also a time for me to answer questions from um, Academy members over the last uh, two weeks or so. Uh, a lot of times I'm unable to answer questions as clearly um, just by text. So the best thing I can do is to respond by playing. And so the, this live Q&A is awesome in the sense that um, basically I'm live on two platforms. First up, I'm live on our Inspired Keys Academy Facebook group because that way on the Facebook group, um, I can see the Facebook chat. <coughs> And excuse me, because I um, I managed to catch my husband's flu. Um, so yeah, the Facebook chat is for Inspired Keys Academy members only. And um, that way I can only answer questions from members um, from the Inspired Keys Academy. Um, and I want to honor those who are showing up live. So I can see right now we've got Adele, Esther, and David, and more might jump on later. Um, so Inspired Keys Academy members, be sure to ask. Adele, thank you so much. Yes, I do hope I feel better soon. Appreciate that. It really doesn't feel good being sick. Um, but yeah, I really want to honor your 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 um your presence being with us so thank you for showing up uh, live inspired keys academy members and i want to make sure that you ask your question in our facebook live chat right now so i'm just going to also type that in um inspired keys academy members oh gosh bad spelling all day um don't do go ahead and ask your worship keys questions now in our live chat you get priority answers yeah cool so that way i wanted to just remind um academy members who are showing up live um to ask questions and i can see one question from adele already so that's awesome um so just wanted to also make sure that you are aware that I'm also live on YouTube because uh, that way you can see my keyboard view. And so as you watch me play, um, it's not just seeing my face and my hands moving, but you actually see what, I'm, what notes I'm playing as well. So Inspired Keys Academy members, go ahead and click on that um, YouTube link, which I've put into the chat. So that way you can see um, exactly what notes I'm playing. Uh, I also wanted to make sure that I am definitely live on YouTube in the correct link. So I'm just testing the link right now. You might have so that way you, yep, cool. Okay. I am definitely live. Um, and, and I see my keyboard view. So everything is working out well today. Thank you, Jesus for when tech works well. Um, yes, I managed to, um, just, uh, catch my husband's flu. So um, he was sick over the weekend and I started falling sick on Monday. Um, it's Wednesday morning right now. I'm still feeling the remnants. I hope it's the remnants of this flu where I am now going through the coughing stage. It's not fun. Excuse me, guys. I guess there's just no other way around it. I just have to get my nose blown. Um, well, and that's why I've got my hand sanitizer just to make things a little bit less gross um okay guys gonna go ahead and jump in um i don't have a ton of questions so 
Um, I'm expecting today to be nice and short, but go ahead and ask your questions, guys, if you have any. And Adele is asking a couple of questions. So I'm gonna go ahead and answer Adele's question. So Inspire Keys Academy member Adele asks, do you have any recommendations for CCM, which I do believe it means Christ contemporary Christian music, preacher chord progressions. Um, yeah, so Adele's basically asking for recommendations for Christ contemporary Christian music, preacher chord progressions. Um, now, I do have a few like personal favorite chord progressions that I uh, love to use. Um, I also believe I might have shared it previously where it's like in a handout so you can actually see the chords properly. Um, so Adele, what I'll do is, and I'll also make sure to write that down because if I don't write anything down, I don't trust in myself to remember that I will <laughs> do it. So notebook and pen, what I will do is to do some search um, to find some chord progressions that um, I've already shared within the academy and I'll just paste the, the link so that you can just go back to see that um, link. Preacher chord progressions. Um, but I do wanna talk a little bit about this because it's a great question. In general, there are uh, well two main guidelines when it comes to the choice of chords. Um, major chords sound happy and bright and cheery and hopeful. Minor chords sound heavy, dark, uh, sullen, uh, solemn even. So it really depends on what the topic is about. Sometimes it's an announcement uh, about a funeral and um, or about the, you know, like some sad news, then I might have to choose to use something a bit darker with minor chords. Uh, but most of the time it would be about something quite hopeful and happy and um, like good news, right? Like Jesus is here to set us free and stuff. So I will then choose happy chords. In general, the guideline Adele is I'll try to keep my chords very smooth so that they lead into each other without too much um, uh, jumps. So Adele, if you want, you can go ahead and type in the scenario and I can give you some ideas on how I might play. Um, but I'm, I'm gonna throw out maybe at least uh, one chord progression for a happy mood and one for a bit sadder. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and maybe uh, let's just get the sad part over with. If it's a bit of a sad announcement, I might use something like a chord six, four, six, Four. Okay, so six is a minor chord. I'm just going to type that into our um, let me see, sad chord progression. Um, people on YouTube Live, you probably won't be able to see this because this um, that I'm typing into is the Facebook Live chat for Inspired Keys Academy members only. Um, but yes, sad, uh, sad chord progression. Something that's sort of like off the top of my head that I will probably play is something like chord six and four. So um, I guess to keep things simple, we'll just keep things in um, the uh, C major chord, uh, C major as a key. And so I'm just gonna go ahead and change some of the settings on Cordy. So that way you can see what I play. Yep, so chord C uh, as key of C. So something like, so this is my chord six. So can you see how that's like six, four, six, four? Then I might just dwell into that a little bit. I am using piano and pad, your classic. I'm using like a one B, uh, yeah, so one B is like a C over E, and I just love the way that sounds. I'm using a chord five as a classic chord. So in general, because of this, the presence of the minor chord, it does sound a little bit sad, a little bit um, sullen and heavy. Uh, but Adele, if I were to just now use a pretty happy one, yes, exactly. Um, so Adele's asking an uplifting and then one more warfare type. Okay, so uh, uplifting. So uplifting, um, my favorite go-to, so I'm just gonna type that in, uplifting chord progression. 
uh, will be court one and four. And then sometimes I'll use fourth inversion to create a sense of freshness. Okay, so now moving on to something a little bit happier and uplifting. Um, hey, Tracy, great to have you join us. And so gonna go ahead and type in uh, and play like in C major, um, something a little bit more uplifting, something like a chord one and four. So something like this. nicely when you go down in A. So <coughs> just throwing out a couple of favorites there. Um, what I do want to share with everybody actually um, is, <laughs> awesome, hi Tracy. So, you know guys, I'm actually going to just go into my main stage at the moment because I, I just sort of recently found out about this and I really like it. Okay, so what I am using right now um, and uh, yeah, I, I, I'll just keep my YouTube on the, the Cordy app. But basically, guys, um, if you're using Worship Essentials, the main stage template, go check out this thing called the compressor because the compressor, which is this knob on the top right, uh, I have found it to be really cool because when you jack the compressor all the way up to like 100%, it makes your piano really, really sharp. So here's the compressor at 100%. I'll just keep my, my pad quiet so you can hear just the piano. Can you see how the piano is really, really, really clear and bright and piercing? Uh, when you move the compressor down to 0%, so it's massive contrast, listen to the way the piano sounds. It's a whole lot less bright. It's still there. Uh, but I've come to realize that when you make the compressor down um, or just keep it a bit lower and then you kind of play it with your pad, it just makes the piano a whole lot more uh, subtle. And in a sense, you can play stuff, but it doesn't get so distracting. So people don't just listen to the piano, but the piano sound becomes a bit blended into the pad sound. Um, and it just sounds like a, a whole lot more subtle and in the background, but still there's a layer piercing through, but not as sharp. So I love the combination of something that's a little bit uh, lower in the compressor for the piano. So like... Something like that. Yeah, I just love the way this sounds. So I just wanted to just uh, throw this out there, guys. If you're using main stage, play around with compressor. Uh, if you are using worship essentials, also play around with the piano tone. Um, that's also an, another way to make the piano sound very, very muted and uh, almost blunt, I guess. Um, and then, of course, Adele, to answer your question on warfare, um, I've come to realize that when you have chord progressions that move upwards, and I'm referring to the bass line, it does sound quite uplifting. So um, if I am like, you know, playing something in the background and it's a very warfare type prayer or service and the preacher's talking about something that's really quite um, like spiritually waging in some kind of um, fight, I guess, <laughs> then I might want to use something that's um, more like the, the baseline actually move upwards. So I'm, I'm thinking of something that's like in my head now, it's something like a chord two, I'm just typing that in, warfare chord progression idea, um, two, one, B, four, five. 
So you have something that sort of goes up and I'll demonstrate that right now. So something like I'm actually, I cannot believe this, but um, um, go check out this awesome, awesome um, song from, okay, it's, a, it's an old album, guys. Israel and New Breed, live from another level. Uh, if you can, watch the video on YouTube, because when you see the way they sing and the way they play, it's awesome like i think that was my spiritual breakthrough just watching the dvd and seeing how they worship so passionately and um just analyze the chord progression it's really really strong spiritual stuff um i guess the song it would be a medley of three songs it's um another level and then the next song is uh, breakthrough i guess lord of the breakthrough yeah that's right lord of the breakthrough um, medley and I think there's one more song but I just can't remember the title so I've typed that into the chat guys go check that out so um, hey Fernando great to have you welcome Fernando is our new Inspired Keys Academy member welcome Fernando so yeah Adele I really really hope that that um, um, gives you some ideas on what you can play for different kinds of uh, uh, chord progression so if you have further questions please respond by uh, typing into the chat uh, but thank you so so much for um, asking that question I'm actually going to move on to the next question who's uh, also asked by Adele and that is uh, like when the speaker is building in intensity I guess yes you can build so yep yeah, something else I am learning um, is that we got to be very sensitive to the speaker um, so some of you here play in the background when the, the preacher is actually going on with a, a sermon okay uh so then in our church we don't do that when this, the preacher preaches the preacher just preaches there's no music at the background but we do play during announcements so um i previously come from a church where everything's really just when it's announcements it's all kind of laid back we go into this jazzy groove and everyone kind of just feels really at home and um, relaxed. This church that I'm in right now, when we play in the background, it can really change depending on the, the contents of the announcement. So it could be an announcement about a fun event and then it gets a bit laid back and can throw in some jazz improv groovy type stuff. Uh, but then sometimes it goes into a, a very serious prayer about something um, spiritual and then we might have to play something a little bit more solemn. So what I feel I can, I really have to improve is to be extra aware of what the speaker is talking about. It used to be that you could just kind of like, I don't really know what the preacher is talking about. He, he makes his own announcements. She talks about whatever and I'm just going to play my stuff. Uh, but what I'm realizing is we got to be extra aware. So if you are listening to the overall sound using avioms, you really need to jack up what the speaker is talking about in that line so that you can really hear the announcements and you are part of the service. So if the, the, the contents change into something quite serious, you must also tone down the way you play and, and make sure, um, like I'm the band leader, so I have... Uh, 
the responsibility of saying into the comms mic, guys, let's tone it down. Let's play uh, a lot slower, maybe. Let's maybe cut the click uh, or make, make the click go into a, a slower BPM. And then everyone just kind of changes it together depending on what the speaker is talking about. So that's something I am learning for this season. Um, so yeah, Adele, I guess, yes, when the speaker builds an intensity, you do want to build an intensity as well. Um, Adele says, I've just had it too. I sympathize. <laughs> okay. And Adele says, <coughs> <coughs> I, thanks. I know all to call once, but guess for preaching, you need to go more intense. Well, it really depends on the, the preacher, I guess. So, um, yeah, uh, let me know if I might have covered like how intense it gets. If it's very, very, I mean, I'm not sure how in, how much further intense it gets. Um, you might want to paint me a picture of how intense things get. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> My gosh. Here's where I wish I can just mute the mic. Um, so Adele, I'm just looking through the rest of the chat and um, you're very welcome. She says, great tip, thanks. So don't compress the pad. Well, I actually don't know if you can compress the pad because from what I know, um, the difference I hear is in the piano. So from the, the sharpness of the piano, it becomes a lot, a lot more muted. Um, I don't actually know if we can compress the pad. Um, guys, if you know whether we can compress the pad or not, please tell me. Uh, once again, so sorry. Just got to get it out of the way. Awesome. So Adele says, love that. Thanks. And yes, Thank you. I really have to thank you guys for just bearing with my snottiness this morning. It's just terrible. Um, great. I'm going to move on. Um, don't see any other questions on our live chat. Yeah, I just want to make sure that I don't miss anyone's questions so far. Um, so far, it's just Adele asking questions. Thank you so much, Adele. I love and it was really um, awesome. Those questions are great. Um, yeah. I guess if I don't see any other questions, I'm gonna go into my um, collected questions of the week, which actually is just uh, one question. I have a um, an awesome Inspired Keys Academy member called Tracy, who shared with us her uh, rendition of, hang on, just gonna go into my Evernote just to make sure I Don't miss out on any questions, but yes, Tracy basically asks for um, feedback on the way she uh, played Built My Life. And um, it was, it's basically a really, really wonderful um, rendition. And my job is to help um, give her some ways to play better. So just to make sure I don't miss out on any details, what I'm gonna do is to go into Tracy's video and just to play either a part of it or all of it and to, to give to give some feedback on the way she played and to help her play better so i'm going to go ahead and listen to that right now Oh, 
Tracy, I really appreciate that, you know, um, she recorded it and she shared her recording um, in the form of a video. And a lot of people will feel that that's very overwhelming um, to share th themselves sing. But thank you so much, Tracy. You are a major inspiration to all of us. Now, what Tracy, now usually I try to make sure that my response to people is applicable to what they are doing. Um, so I was asking Tracy and she did say that she is playing um, the version, which is from Bethel, um, uh, Built My Life, because there's so many Built My Lives. And um, the one that she's using is the one by Peyton Allen from Bethel Worship, which I have not really listened to yet, and I want to just spend a little bit of time to listen to it right now and make sure that based on what I hear, I can give feedback on how she played. Uh, that can be a little bit more to this version. So let's just have a listen to this. It's in the key of C, so that's nice. Song we could ever okay, so so just as a starter, Tracy, what I can hear is that um, I think you played chord C F C F, whereas what I'm hearing is that the intro is C F C over E F. So there is the first inversion. So I'm actually going to just make sure I don't get that wrong in how you play. So awesome sounds you're using, awesome voice you have. That's a C. Yeah, so that's definitely a CFC if you're playing. Um, now, it's very subtle. There is, well, some people may not even realize it, uh, but people like me will realize, oh my gosh, you're using a first inversion, and that is so cool. Um, just because I think it really creates a sense of contrast to the way your chord sounds. So if it's CFCF, which is very repetitive, since it's technically a chord progression of four, two of which is a repeat of the other two, uh, having a little bit of harmonic contrast makes all the difference. So I will highly suggest using the, the E bass for the third chord out of the four. Um, yeah, so I guess if I were to demonstrate how I'll use that, it would be um, something like... I'm going to go ahead and continue with the Peyton Allen version. Worthy of all the praise we could ever bring. Worthy of every breath we could ever bring. We live for you. Sing out, Jesus. Jesus, the name above every other name. Jesus, the only one who could ever say, Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. Live for you, what we live for. Holy, there is no one like you. There is none beside 
Okay, so um, Tracy, what I can hear is that the third chord is now a second inversion. I'm gonna go ahead and listen to how you play and see and respond accordingly. There is absolutely nothing much I can um, contribute at this point because you just sound a lot like the recording. So well, well done. I'm just going to go ahead and continue listening to this. Okay, great, great. So now I'm at the turnaround where it's at the end of the first chorus, right? Before you go into the verse two. And what I'm hearing in the recording with the full band, so it's not very fair because we're trying to emulate an entire band's sound in 10 fingers, right? So you have a piano and a pad, um, and then you're trying to emulate the way the band is starting to build the dynamics a little bit at this point. And I feel that you do have a few avenues to play that um, and build that up a little bit. Um, I'm listening to how you play, and then I have some suggestions. to your turnaround at the same area and um, yours is still quite quiet and that's fine if you are wanting that kind of a sound if you want to emulate the way a uh, battle is starting to build up though uh, and I'm just gonna replay this a little bit okay so at this point what you want to pay attention to is how the rhythm is starting to build up in sixteenths okay so you've got the one e and a two e and a three e and a four e and a, so what I'm starting to feel is that the drummer is doing that um, the electric is also doing that a little bit so you might want to create the contrast by doing it like okay so let's start from the section before jack up my compressor compressor so that way my piano gets a little bit more pierced so let's go again so in your love to That you guess you could you could just rely on the everlasting one and five right so i've done a ton of one five this is the one this is the five so basically you're just doing my right hand's just doing the thumb, 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 thumb. my left hand's doing the others so i'm pairing my fingers up uh, my hands up so they create that sense of a pattern and that's a busier pattern that then creates a sense of movement and building up dynamics so i really hope that you you, you can try this hack uh i yep sharon hey hello sharon great to see you awesome um sharon if you have a question just go ahead and ask i'm so glad you managed to join us um and yeah go and go ahead and dive right into the rest of um how peyton ellen and the worship team in Bethel worship do it. Yeah, 
yeah so basically i'm listening to verse two right now and tracy they do continue to build it up so i'm not really good at multitasking i and i'm really bad with lyrics i don't have a set of build my life lyrics in front of me but what i will do is to try to show you how i'll just carry on with that same kind of um built up progression just on piano and pad um and and actually i was thinking of how you said you are playing keys and you are the lead singer which is itself amazing i'm not sure if you actually have a band to back you up but if you do have a band get them to play a lot more movement because you it's very very technically demanding to be able to sing lead which is what you do but also to build up the music dynamically on your fingers just on your own. I mean, you can do it, but it's just, it's not easy. So, uh, because you need to like spiritually direct and everything. So uh, I'm just gonna demonstrate the verse two. So. big and appreciate like it's an obvious co uh, contrast to verse one so yeah um that's what i'm hearing and I'm just gonna forward a little bit more so i can contribute to the different sections <laughs> Basically, from the rest of the song, from at that point onwards, the whole music, the music just continues to build up in that 16th rhythm, which we can hear quite clearly. Uh, whereas, just going back to your video, um, <laughs> yeah, so at this point, <coughs> thank you for your patience. Um, so you can, you're still at the <coughs> Ooh, bad. It usually gets this bad when it's just about to recover, so. So Tracy, from what I hear, um, your rhythms are still at the eight, so one and two and three and See if you can try to incorporate more movements. So like 16, one E and a two E and a three E and a four E. And I think that's gonna make a lot of difference uh, in your chorus two section, okay? Um, and now I'm just gonna listen to the way they do the bridge. So this sounds like the beginning part where it's kind of nice and low and then moving on. Starting to hear more of the 16s come in. It's sort of accents on the eights. One and two and three and so that's what I'm listening out for. I'm listening out for the accents, um, and it's sort of with a little hint of 16th rhythms coming in. Okay, so that's what I'm hearing. Um, so yeah, that's that's how you can build up your bridge section, Tracy. Just going into the way you play the bridge right now. Yeah, this part's fine, this, this beginning part, the bridge instrumental. Okay, so Tracy, what I am hearing that I definitely can suggest to you to um, try is don't use such clean chords four and five or F and G. So right now what I'm hearing is... So we can hear the F on the top. We can also hear the B on the uh, in the middle voice for chord five 
Uh, what I will suggest is stick to Everlasting 1 in 5, which is on your right hand, just playing C and G the whole time. So, uh, if you want, you can resolve your, you know how chord 5, which is G, if you have a C on the right hand, you might need to resolve that down a step to the B. So you can sneakily just go down a little bit onto the B. So the way I play the chords for the bridge would be. So I hope you hear the difference between the clean and the contemporary sound of chords four and five, which I believe will create a big difference in the sound. Just gonna go ahead and zoom into the rest of the song. I have a feeling I know what it's probably gonna sound like for at this point onwards. So basically they just get really high and climactic, um, just paralleling that to your playing at this point. Okay, so Tracy, once again, it really depends on the direction of how your church is doing it at this point. Basically, it um, it depends, right? So, of course, yes, we go ahead and prepare things um, as much to a recording as possible. But if you feel or I mean, you're the one leading, according to, um, I'm not sure when you mean voice or um, lead, I'm not sure if you mean you're actually worship leading or you're one of the main singers, but whoever is leading the worship needs to sense the direction of the worship, right? So are we building? Are we keeping it low? At this point, it gets really flexible towards the, the latter half of any song. So Tracy, if you want to build it up to a great climax, and I'm just saying this is a scenario where you want it to be super musically climactic, uh, then this is probably the last bit I want to show you how you can play. Um, so as usual, the, the concept will be to try to get your fingers on the extreme ranges gradually. So I guess I'm going to hmm, go for the bridge twice and so sh show you how I build it up. In first time and then the second time go into the real climax. Um, okay, so the, the bass line's important. Try to make sure your bass kind of um, goes into like a one, two, three, four, and then if you really want to build it, then you double that one and two. So that's with a pedal. So I'm gonna put everything in now. my like for my real opinions though like just thinking listening to how that sounded um the piano really sounded a little bit too desperate like i would probably do the whole thing again but turn my compressor down so i'm playing just as intensively but i would rather the piano not sound so desperate like listen to me i am important like i just feel that's a bit too much um okay with my compressor turned down let's listen to how it sounds <laughs> I mean, I'm not really impressed. I don't know why. I just didn't really like the way that sounded. Um, and yeah, I guess perhaps what I'm trying to demonstrate is 
you might need to be quite critical about the way you sound. But I was, quite, I feel like I didn't really enjoy that. Uh, and I'm trying to see what I can do to improve in the sound. So I'm actually going to my main stage and I'm just gonna lower my piano tone. So. I kind of lowered my piano down to like 40%. Uh, and now it doesn't even sound like a piano anymore. So can you hear how it's extremely, extremely muffled? I, I think that might be a bit too much. So I'm actually gonna jack that up to maybe 75%. Okay, so there's a huge difference, maybe down to like 60% or something. Yeah, okay, I quite like the way that sounded. I, I like that it's not piercing. I mean, that's just a personal preference. And also it depends, Tracy, on whether you have the whole band with you. So if you have the whole band and especially the electric, because that's a lot like a partner instrument with piano, uh, the electric builds a lot when the climax comes as well. So if the electric guitarist is going like strong lines, going down, 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 you really don't want to compete that high line with your piano sound. So just be extremely sensitive to the overall sound and make sure that you are constantly thinking like a music arranger. If someone else is playing that, climax line don't um don't steal the line line yeah i think that's the best thing i can describe it so cool i'm gonna go ahead thank you so much tracy i love that you might be able to tell that i am a bit biased i love the song so i'm um, so gonna go ahead with uh what tracy said sorry i have to leave the q a that's fine that's why we have a replay uh, listen to everything a bit later thank you so much for the input it's very helpful praise the lord thank you and i'm so glad it helps sharon says hi sandra i really hope you get better quickly amen thank you thank you for the tip on to getting the band to build up the music when leaving one of my favorite worship songs at the moment is great are you lord by sunset daughters and i leave from guitar Woohoo! that's an awesome song um, i have to say i'm more used to the version by can't remember um i mean i could tell you but i'll need some time to research uh, but it's the other one um and then sharon ellen says however i find the six eight difficult to play on heath and sing at the same time any tips um sharon i would appreciate if you could tell uh type into the chat an example of a six eight song because that way i could try to play um in reference to the song that you are thinking about. I guess the first 6-8 song that everyone kind of knows uh, that comes to my mind instantly is Good Good Father, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, right? Okay, thank you so much and apologies for that. More hand sanitizing. Ah really sucks when you are sick um so sh i guess sharon my best advice is see it's because you say you find it difficult to play the keys and sing at the same time okay that in itself is hard right whether it's four four or whatever the time signature to play and sing requires two skills in one so my question falls back on how comfortable are you playing on its own that's one and then second how comfortable are you singing so say you come, you practiced to the point where you are very comfortable playing, that's good. Have you come to a point where you are comfortable singing? If you are also comfortable singing, then technically, individually, those things are sorted. Now it is the art of putting them together, which takes a bit of time to practice on its own. I mean, like everything, right? Um, you can drive, but can you drive and talk? Some people struggle with that, so that takes a bit of practice, but I'm sure it's something you can acquire with practice. So Sharon, when it comes to 6-8, it's like a slightly different ball game for different people. Uh, my question would be Sharon, how comfortable are you playing 6-8 on piano on its own? So um, are you able to, so I'm just, cause I don't see your response. So I'm just gonna go ahead and, oh, sorry, it's great on you Lord. Thanks, thanks Sharon. Okay, good, good, good. So this chat just doesn't move up. I have to keep scrolling to see if, I usually play Google Father and Great Are You Lord. That's awesome. Okay, great. Great Are You Yeah, one, two, three. Okay, so. <coughs> so. <coughs> Sharon, my question is, <clears throat> how 
comfortable are you playing Red Are You Lords? So, so I guess I'm just gonna assume it's in the key of C and tell me if you want me to play in a different key. So, um, I guess first up, you just wanna be able to play like. able to establish a groove that is good for 6-8. <coughs> that would be pretty important. <coughs> um, tips, tips. I'm just thinking of how to answer your question. Yep, I think Sharon, just based on your question on whether you have you want some tips on how to play six eight time um, comfortably together, I, I still think it's a matter of being really good at the individual, um, the art of the individual before putting them together, which then takes practice. So really, I, I can't seem to give you further advice. Uh, but yes, I love your choice of moving from Google Father into Great Are You Lord. So both of them being a little bit slower in pace and ballad-like, I think they go really well together. They're almost entirely the same speed from my memory. So I am. I think it's a great choice. Um, but yes, Sharon, maybe what I would love to do is to hear, to, to be able to do is to hear how you currently play and sing. And you know what? Take it a step at a time. Feel free to send in a recording of just you playing um, on the piano. I want to hear how you play your 6-8 groove. So like the way I demonstrated just now was one, two, one, and two, one, and, and two, right? So that's the way I tried to establish the sense of a 6-8 timing. Um, I want to hear how you do it. And then I want to hear how you sing. And then I want to hear how you play and sing. So take them one step at a time, one layer at a time. And I really believe that you will be able to do it once you settle uh, one, um, one layer at a time. So I really hope that that helps, Sharon. Please go ahead and ask um, if you have further uh, responses to this. But otherwise, oh, cool. Yes. Okay. Uh, Sharon says, not comfortable with 6-8 at all, playing on keyboard. I usually play in B major. Cool. Thanks a lot, Sharon. Um, so, yeah, I think that's the problem. It's already something you're not comfortable to do to play in 6-8. What more to play and sing, which makes it extremely hard, really. So, um, Sharon, maybe what I can do is to demonstrate how I might play it. So, okay, in B major, right? So that, that's helpful information. I'm gonna change my chordy app to the key of B, and then I'm gonna go ahead and show you um, a little bit of Great Are You Lord and Google Father. So I guess I'll play... Um, Sharon, what you might want to do is to turn on your metronome. So I'm not sure if, okay, so what I'll do is I'll probably turn, go to Google and then I'm going to um, Google the BPM for Great Are You Lord and Good Good Father. And then I will turn on the metronome so I hear like a tick tock tock, tick tock tock, tick tock tock. And that's important because Sharon, just as it is with every um, pianist, when we play, we need to have a sense of the metronome click in our head. And so even though I'm playing and I sound like I'm just playing, but in my brain, I actually have the metronome click in my head. So I guess I'll have to sound really, I guess, uh, annoying to go like, Thank you. 
So once again, also Sharon, it really depends on how many people you have in your band. Are you playing by yourself on piano? Are you playing um, with a band? Because if you have the whole band, and if you listen to the All Sons and Daughters version, um, pretty much the piano is just doing. Okay, let me just turn on the app again. Yeah, so it, it's just playing. So you don't want to overplay. If you have the whole band, don't have to play all the extra stuff that I was doing. But if you are the only one playing, then yes, you have to play a bit more to beef up the entire um, sound. Um, and then great, great are you going like do good father, right? Um, so do good father, how would I play in B? Let me just think about that. Uh, how does good father? Because I kind of think about how the guitar sounds. So I'm trying to emulate the accompaniment from the original recording so it sounds easy for people to come in, right? So. Sharon, I really, really hope that helps. I think the next little homework I have for you would be to send in a recording of how you are currently playing. Yes, I, I like that you, uh, you are honest about how you already struggle in 6-8. Trust me, it's not new. Lots of people struggle with 6-8. Um, it sounds easy, it sounds great on recordings, but when it's like a playing style, it's a very different style. What I do need you to do is just play the recording and then go to your piano and play together with the recording and just to discover the way you would have a groove on the piano, just a basic groove. And then just play it with the recording a lot of times so that you get really comfortable with the way it sounds. And then when you get comfortable, that's when it's sort of programmed in your head. It's like a, a, a software installation, I guess, if you could call it. And just, it becomes natural. And when it becomes natural, then you throw in the vocals and then you put it in the So Sharon, taking a step at a time, playing together, uh, playing and singing is already hard. Throw in six, eight into the bag and it just makes it extra hard. So get one thing good and with practice and persistence, you will be able to get there. So thank you so, so much, Sharon. I really look forward to receiving your recording. Um, that's really all I have today. Pretty much, um, I don't have a whole lot of questions, but I'm also thankful because uh, at this rate, I'm probably just gonna start coughing and uh, get into a mess. And it's just terrible to be on air like this. So I wanna thank you for bearing with me over the past and, uh, one hour. And Inspire Keys Academy members, don't stop asking your questions. Um, throw them into the Inspire Keys Academy Facebook group or email me if you are uh, very, very shy about uh, asking questions. And those of you who are watching on YouTube, I appreciate your joining us as well. Uh, if you are interested to join the Inspire Keys Academy member, you must check out inspirekeys.com slash join because that is how you are going to uh, know how to join as an Inspire Keys Academy member. And then I will be answering your Worship Keys questions live. Um, I do that twice a month. And um, yeah, I, I find it an honor to be able to bless you and bless your church to play better. Um, 
it is a calling that I know God has given me to help worship keyboardists this season to uh, sharpen their skills everywhere. And um, yeah, I would love to be able to answer your worship keys questions. So if you have worship keys questions to ask, uh, to ask as well, be sure to check out inspiredkeys.com slash join. And that way I could um, answer your questions with priority like I do on these uh, twice a month live Q&As. Thank you so, so much, guys, for joining me. Take care, God bless, and I'll see you in the next live Q&A. Hopefully by then I'm not snotty and coughing and being all disgusting. Thank you. God bless. See you later.